Sarah, all right, calm down. It doesn't matter. God. Oh, I'm so excited because we're actually going to find out the purpose of our lives today. We are. Yes, we are. Our first guest claims that you can find your place in the world by just listening to your intuition. Well, look how good I'm reading this. Let's take a look at her story. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I'm an artist, I'm a writer, I don't know what else to do. In 1993, I had reached a point in my life where I just felt I had had it. And I was standing right in the middle of my cottage in Richmond, California. And I just was screaming, literally screaming at God out loud. I had turned 52 that year and I was living alone. That day, when I snapped, would eventually lead to what I now see as my life purpose. Since 1976, I was living a dual life, raising two children as a single parent and supporting myself in regular office jobs. I married early at the age of 20, and I never had the feeling that I was destined to be successful. Um, it just, I felt like I, I never gave myself permission to make mistakes or to really take any kind of risks. I was very shy. I remember reading news magazines in the library so that I would be able to make dinner conversation with my husband. Well, after 1969, I got divorced, and things started to shift, but I wasn't really aware of it at the time. For example, I had a, this intuition to change my name, but I didn't do anything about it. And it wasn't until about a year or so later when I just happened to meet a woman, and I mentioned the idea of changing my name, and she said, oh, you should use numerology in order to harmonize your new name with your birthday. And that was really, as I look back on it now, that was the beginning of my whole spiritual path. It opened up exactly at that moment. And I see now that that was an intuition that I needed to follow. I believe that everything happens for a purpose and that when you are focused on something that you want, that you will attract into your life the people that can help you find that thing or get closer to it. And that is really what I mean by following the synchronicities, following your intuition, following the messages. Everyone you meet has a message for you. the book the purpose of your life experiential guide carol adrian and her daughter intuition expert sig sigrid emerson carol sigrid yeah. can you believe it no wow well i feel like i kind of i'm already comfortable with you though yeah god if you told me i was going to be sitting here talking to you someday i would never believe this that be on tv with my daughter it's a really? mystery how i ever got here Sometimes yeah. I'll feel that way, too. I'll see myself on TV and go, what am I doing? That's right. What am I doing here? How did you get here? God, I got here in a car that you sent over to me. <laughs> yeah, with Richard, Richard, the limo Richard driver. Richard brought us over here. <laughs> no, I don't mean here. I oh. mean here. The big here. The big here. Yeah, the big here. <laughs> How'd you get here where you're like an author? Yeah, and you're really. Like what? really famous. Well, I, I don't know, you know, it's a mystery to me how it all happened because I never set out to write any books and I've written like six books now and I never started out to do that at all. I was an artist in the beginning as I think my um, TV thing showed there that I was quite a long and now time. Now she's looking and to get a TV show. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a talk show host next. No, you I don't. Do that. I do not no. want to do that. Oh, no. it's, I couldn't it have your, your brain. Oh, no, it fires your brain. I have this job that you do for you, you can't believe how hard it oh, is. Oh, I know it's hard. It took me a whole year to figure out how you're supposed to do it because it's yeah. new. No, you know? I would never do this. Yeah, people freak out for the yeah. weirdest things. Yeah. You have to know so much. You have to be on track every minute. Yeah. Be conscious every second. You know? Yeah, and like here in Hollywood <laughs> where like everybody's just afraid to say anything. Yes, exactly. Well, you'd think they'd have the money that would allow them to say something. Yeah, really. Right. can't say anything. No. I guess. Does that mean we don't have to say too much now? We can just sit here and Well, say the anything. big thing. Just say the big thing. What are we supposed to do? Well, in terms of life purpose, if you're looking for your life purpose. Like, is there really a purpose behind every coincidence? Yes, there is. You know, I was sitting in the dressing room today. We were just sitting there getting right. our makeup done. Oh, that and it was, was a great the, story. That was a great story. What did that? What did she, she say? She was having a birthday party. Somebody who works on your show was having a birthday party, and some guy she didn't invite to the birthday party just showed up. And she said, "Oh, I've been looking for an apartment in Silver Lake." He said, "Oh, I just bought a building in Silver Lake. You can you can have great rent too. I mean, yeah, she's going to get good rent out of it too." So she. How was, often does that? I mean, be really truthful. How often does that happen? 
It happens a lot. It happens like every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. 30 yeah. seconds. We all have it. <laughs> right. And the I more think. that you concentrate on what you want in life, and you have the question, like, I want an apartment, or I want a new job, or I want a new boyfriend, or something, you will get it. It will attract in the right person. Or right. I'm interested in. Not just I want. Yeah, but I'm but interested in. Or I want. Well, yeah. Okay. But don't you have to be really sure, like, all the work is from, like, figuring out what you really want, right? That's a thing that takes 48 well, years. Well, you know, something that I found on that? Yeah. A lot of times we get hung up in the specifics, like you don't know what's right for you, so you think, I don't know if I should pray for this or pray for that. But I find the best way to do it is if you can think, I want to feel like this. You can, if you can remember a yeah. feeling that you've had in the past yeah. when you felt like, yes, I felt great, I'm yeah. on track. Then I'm feeling good right now. If you're feeling okay, great, we're saying remember May this, right now. because this is right. a good time. See, and then later, when you mm -hmm. don't feel that way anymore, then right. you remember, how did it feel when I felt on track? Yeah. That's how I want to feel again. If you can keep that energy inside of you for a while, every day, like before you get out of bed even, mm -hmm. just concentrate on that, then your energy level is going to be so attractive that you'll get people coming in or these coincidences That's will true, isn't it? Like when you yeah. mope around and you're angry and whatever, exactly. that's how come you just get mopey, angry yeah. around yeah. you. Exactly. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. That's true. Right. Huh, aren't I right? Exactly. <laughs> That's that's exactly what that means. What's your name? Joanne. Joanne. Nice meeting you, Joanne. Same here, Rosette. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think people get stuck overanalyzing. It's easier if you focus on the physical, on how it makes you feel. Like you can always, in retrospect, say, the oh, physical? I shouldn't have done this. The guy, you know, whatever. I met some guy and it didn't feel right, and then it didn't. What work physical? Out. What do you mean? The physical sense in your body. It's the intuition, you know. The physical of, sense? She's a trainer, so she's into the physical side. Yeah. And when you hear the intuition or you or, feel you it. Know, you know, you've got like that a, pit in your stomach or. Yeah, you've got it, feeling. Something isn't. The just, pit in your stomach, Something yeah, isn't right that, here. Yeah. So maybe yeah. this isn't the opportunity that I want to follow. Or, wow, I feel really excited. I feel really empowered by this. So You know what I'll, I'll do? I'll overanalyze it. I'll go, I have a pit feeling in my stomach. But that's just because this is bringing up feelings yeah. from a former well, blah, right. Blah, 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 blah. right, and you'll overlook it. And, and then, then I'll just discount it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you'll kind of get off track. Yeah. That's what happened to me when I snapped. <laughs> what I was trying to get to in, when I described that incident was I had at one point, you know, I'd always thought of myself as an artist, and, um, and then I was interested in, in, you know, metaphysical things like right. numerology and astrology and so forth. But I, somehow I didn't think that was um, mainstream enough or right. acceptable. Right. So, right. I, yeah, I judged it. Right. And I went off and it did another. Because it wasn't an accepted yeah, science. Yeah, I felt, oh, Because well. it's the only science that makes any sense, so it's not accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I went into business with a friend of mine who did really good work, and I went into it really for the wrong reasons because I thought it was more, a little bit more glamorous, and I'd have her to help me. I'd get more clients this way. And it was good work, but it wasn't right for me. So I went into it for the wrong reasons. It takes a long time to figure out yeah. the wrong So I was reason. listening to the outside influences rather than what was really right for me. Does everybody on this earth for a reason? Well, see, I believe that everybody comes into birth with the purpose inside them. They don't take birth unless there's a reason to have the life. So you take birth to come here and learn something? Mm -hmm. And to create. It's not all learning. It's creating. And creating. Some people come in, they just want to be in, in a body again. What about so these fabulous. people that just want to come and uh, like do bad things? What about them? Well, see, I think they get off track. Yeah, I don't think you, you start out having a purpose to be off, you know, to be yeah. a murderer. I really don't. I think something gets in the way between your birth and when you start making these horrible yeah. actions. Yeah, well, I don't think people are programmed to come in okay. to be murderers. I really okay. don't. Yeah. We make them, don't we? Something yeah. does. Yeah. Some choice gets made there. Okay, we're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back. And when we come back, Carol and Sigrid will show you how to figure out your life's purpose with some really new math. Stay tuned. Hey, if you're going to be in the L.A. area and you want to see the show, call us at 1-800-485-6885. I think intuition is, is trusting the unknown. It's an inward feel that you feel on the inside, dying to come on the outside, and um, sometimes inefficient in, intuition is like maybe a dream that you want to come into a reality okie doke thank you whoever that was who was that person off the oh a person off the street oh oh cool okay so tell her 
tell her? Yeah, how what? do we figure it out? Do the math for us. Oh, on, your, the, on the numerology? Yeah. On your okay. Birthday. I'm going to do numerology. Now, that's like astrology, but it's uh, working with the numbers of okay. your birthday. And so, Roseanne, your birthday is 11. I'm just going to write yeah. this on here and then show everybody. 11-3-1952. Okay. 11, okay. Yeah. So everybody who's figuring this out, yeah. you need to put down the months. Put the your day, own, not mine. Put the month, your day, and the 1952 or whatever your year is. You want to make sure to include 19 or it won't work out correctly. Then what I'm doing here is I'm going to now add 11. And this is a special case. I'm just going to put 11 there, 3 again. And then, this is hard doing it upside down. 1 and 9 is 10, and 5 is 15, 16, 17. So that's a 17. What I want to do here is add this one more time. 1 plus 7 is 8. Is 8. So I've got an 8 here for the year. Yeah. Is that, can you read yeah. that? Then it's, yeah. I'm adding across. 11 and 3 is 14, yeah. and 8 is 22. 22. So now, Roseanne, your birth path, this is called the birth path. Mm -hmm. And it talks about who you are naturally, what your abilities are, and so forth, what yeah. you came here to give to us. Okay. A 22 is a master number because it's a double digit, two and two. So it's the number of the master builder, the visionary, the role model. I see you as a role model. It's very, uh, four alone is very practical and earthy, and that's the qualities that the public knows about you, right? You're a very earthy person, down to earth. Um, interested in like, you know, showing different things that are happening in the common world. Right. And so this is really, your, your birth path is like a visionary for uh, showing really things that are having to do with the commonalities between the human, you know, in the human race, the values that we, that we value as a human race and showing how people work together. Now as a 22, you're going to be a very hard worker. Yeah, you're going to be hard driven to I'm have your vision. Yeah done the way you want it to do. Yeah, yeah, See? I am, totally. That's the way 22s are. They're visionaries. Um, what about how come it feels so good to be mean sometimes? <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> well, it would be more in wanting control and being maybe a little perfectionistic. Okay. And where does that come from in her chart? It comes from that one the heart. one. Yeah, you have a one heart. You have a, I, I have your chart here yeah. as my notes. And the other, see, from your name, I can get a lot of other influences off of your entire birth name which was, you care if I say? No, go ahead. <laughs> Roseanne Cher Sherry? Sherry. Sherry Barr. Yeah. And when I took the letters apart and put the values to them, you have a heart's desire of one. In fact, you even have a challenge of one. So right. ones are like, this is my way. I'm the center oh. of the universe. Here I am. Oh, so that's okay. And I'm right. I'm and always I'm right. right. And that's true. I mean, yeah. isn't that yeah. weird? Yeah. We have that always right, right. right. <laughs> and not, I'm like the greatest singer, the greatest actress, and the greatest talk show host. Right. That's it. The ones, that's the one. You yeah. have to have that to get ahead in this kind of a. Boy, don't you? Yeah. Especially if you're a girl. Oh my mm -hmm. God, the way they beat you down and mold See, your mind. Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to survive that <laughs> I, other than just being full out insane? Just like, there's no other way. There's no that's other right. way. Outside programming. Mm hmm. They're trying to drive me crazy. <laughs> I'm not just crazy because I was born that way. People are trying to drive me crazy, damn it. Well, the one has to be okay with standing alone. Well, You're going to stand alone yeah. sometimes. Because I am so good looking, I can do it. <laughs> okay, what happens if we get a horrible birth path number? Should we just like hide under the bed forever or what? Well, you don't really have to do that. None of the numbers are horrible, but they no. do, you know, if you think of them on a spectrum, yeah. you've got in the middle of one, like your heart's desire, very determined, very ambitious, very the straightforward, leader. the leader. But what happens if you get overly leadership-wise, overly um, arrogant, or you get into dominance, you could be a tyrant, not you, of oh, course. Oh, yeah, I could but definitely be a somebody tyrant. Somebody. I have been. takes it yeah. to the extreme. You get too much into the leadership thing. And oh, then I was a terrible tyrant. Or if you go the other direction and you don't use you your one. You can be insecure, actually. Yeah, yeah I can do that insecure. sometimes, too. It depends yeah. on, like, who I'm talking to. Right. Like, some guys, like, if they're really rich and powerful, like, then I feel like I'm just, like, such a loser, <laughs> and I'll do whatever they tell me because I'm so terrified of them. Right. But then other guys, like, you know, I'll just want to destroy them. I'll just want to destroy them. Yeah. Destroy them. Right. I just want to, like, yeah. rip off their and destroy them. Are you a Scorpio? Yeah, I'm a Scorpio. Mate and kill. Mate and kill. That's, 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 what what I that's my problem, Scorpio though. Scorpio women, mate and kill. But have that's like the before. fun part, and, and then you have to keep living with it. Right. 
thing. That's a bad thing. Your destiny is to be a spiritual person, however. Yeah. It's a seven. The older you get, the more you get in touch with that. In fact, you're yeah. really in that position right now. This phase of your life. I just figure you, you've got to tell the truth, though. Yeah. Yes. That we're all a combination of every single thing exactly. that there is. And exactly. it's all okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, like, hide it, get rid of it. Right. You just have to work with it and transform it. You know how I see you, Roseanne? When I was looking at your chart, I see you as, like, stunningly beautiful. Thank that was you. My first <laughs> oh, you're wonderful. The most talented actress. <laughs> Fabulous. Ever. She walked the face here. Very funny. <laughs> We're feeding into her one yeah, right now. Right, right. We're giving her that idea. Yeah, we got to give okay, it to you. Thank give you. it to you good because you don't hear it the first yeah, time. You, know? don't, you don't yeah, hear how great you really are oh, the okay. first time. Yeah. Right. But you're also to me like a truth teller. Wouldn't yeah. you say? Because I, I, try to I be. would imagine that you have the ability to like zing in on somebody and know when the phonies are giving oh, you yeah, a Oh, yeah, in a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I can tell. I can't yeah. stand that. Yeah. Right. Because it'll be like, what are you trying to sell me? That's you exactly got enough money. That's an example of this. So the seven can be like sarcastic yeah. and skeptical and suspicious, but it's also like dead on, very intuitive. So do you well, people are afraid of that. They don't like people that tell the truth. I figure this out unless they're already dead. <laughs> then they like them. <laughs> right. As right. soon as they like torture them and kill them, like crucify them and whatever else they do, set them on fire, burn them at the stake, whatever we're doing right. this yeah. week. That then as really soon as they're they dead, you go, they, they actually were right. Yeah. yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I see you. I Why see do we you do that? that? We do it in our own life too, don't we? Well, that was a, that's. I think that judgment, where judgment comes in and holds us back, judging ourselves and others. Absolutely. We'll be back in a minute. I think that's true. Yeah. More mercy, less judgment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you drink coffee or if you smoke, stains on your teeth could be this. That was cool. It said 68% always believe their intuition. Well, that's really good. Oh, I didn't see that. I think it's yeah. right. I think they did a poll right. on yeah. the internet. Yeah. Um, well, tell yeah. us about this, that we actually pick who we work with, go to school with, and Nothing's an accident. Right. This is something that I've learned in my research and studies, that we come into life with a kind of a group of souls that we probably are, have known many lifetimes. Right. And so probably my daughter and I and my son, because we're really close as a family, have been you yeah, know, together before. I know that with all you my kids. You just feel it. And usually it's a spark. You feel it right yeah. off the bat. <clears throat> yeah. And you just like, you can talk about anything mm -hmm. uh, easily. It's almost like you're reading each other's right, minds. Totally. And You're the same kind. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also think the people that give you the biggest dose of grief are probably also one of those people. Absolutely. Because who, they who can get to you yeah. like your kids. Yeah. That's why here you are working with your daughter. How yeah. can you guys do that? We had a big fight. We right had a big fight all the way over here. <laughs> right before we got in the car, we never have fights. We had a big fight right before we, we came have fights. No. Do, do you like do you like four <laughs> no. fights where you no. scream and cry? No. We See, never that's know. how me and my no, daughter. No, we, 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 we don't have a lot of fights. We were so that's a hard year in a hotel room. room. <laughs> what are you talking about? How hard is that, though, to learn? Mothers and daughters are like, Decrease the <sighs> decrease the uh, conflict Stress. so you oh. can actually talk. You really have to look the other way a lot. I find. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we actually do quite well together. <laughs> it's always we the mother that brings together. it back. We, we teach, actually we do teach. quite well together. We, we teach classes together yeah. on intuition. We yeah. do very well. Do you have any grandchildren? Not no. yet. Are you married? Yeah. yeah. You're married, but you don't have grandchildren. No. Yet. Are you going to have any for your mother? I don't, I, I don't know. Probably <laughs> at some point. How, how long do you think? Uh, I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just helping you out a little. Okay. <laughs> I, don't I was even feeling ask double mother. You don't even ask. I, I, knew, I knew you were too See, kind to tip. ask. But I don't see, ask I, her. I do ask. I ask my daughters every day. When mm -hmm. we be getting married and having grandchildren for me? I saw your daughters on the show a while back. They're I'll cool. They're, they're really cool. cool. We have a viewer oh. on the phone right now who wrote us an email. Her name's Kim Lee, and she's from Boston. Kim, you wrote us for a reason, and it would be? Uh, to find my purpose of life. Okay, and she, she's got it for you. Oh, great. Do um, you want my birthday? I have her birthday. She figured it all out already because you've been on the phone that long. I <laughs> figured it out. So just keep holding. Okay. I figured it out because you're born on September 17, 1961, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I did here is I'm, you can see that I've just reduced the 9 is already one digit. 17, 1 plus 7 equals 8, so I put it underneath. And 1961, 
adds up to 8 also. So, and then I add it across, 9 and 8, eight and eight, 8 adds up to 25 or 7. So, um, now, do you have any more specific question, Kim, about your, your life right now? I mean... Yes, I do. Um, I'm 38, planning on entering college to study biology and earth science, uh -huh. and I was wondering, will this path lead me to the purpose of my life? Is there a reason? You're already to... on the purpose of your life. You couldn't not be on your purpose. You're at a particular stage of your purpose right now. Well, and um, what, what stage is she at? What stage you're at is you're in a nine year. Remember, we, we which makes you feel like. You're not on purpose at yeah. all. <laughs> this year for you, Kim, is a time when you're going to be wrapping up a lot of things. Now, I can see that you're thinking ahead to go to school. That's good. But, you know, there's some, still some things that have to fall into place right now until you really clear your decks. If there's any unresolved emotional issues in any area of your life, then that's something you could work on. In terms of going back to school, though, I think you're exactly on track because I'm looking at your, the numbers that I worked out here for you. And you're, um, you're a person with your eight and sevens that I, that I showed you in your birth path. You need status. You need credibility. You would function very well in something like a university atmosphere or taking a job where you're in a structured scientific type of thing. Uh, you are a person who should specialize because of your seven, kind of like Roseanne. You specialize in something because knowledge is everything to you. Yes. And the other thing I find, Sigurd and I were talking about this, about the one. How, how did you say that oh, about the one? Um, well, we were wondering if maybe you had a, a critical father or even an absent father, but some kind of uh, male influence in your life. Or you have something that makes you you're, you feel very perfectionistic. I'm a perfectionist about everything in my life. <laughs> yes. And well, I did have a very dominant father in my life. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's something wow. then that you, you know, that I gotta do something commercial. to note. Hold on. Yeah, we gotta do a commercial. We'll be right back. Well, that's freaky. So you don't feel this. A huge majority of people think they know why they were put on on the earth. That's cool. Yeah. A lot of people know, I guess. Do you believe them, though? <laughs> well, if they say it, 87%? I, don't I don't believe that. Do you believe that? That seems a little high. Yeah, that yeah. seems high because most people are asking that Well, question. it's probably 2 in the morning where people are watching. They're, like, sleep-deprived and drunk yeah. or something. Because <laughs> when you're drunk, you think you know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you see it clearly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It was really fun having both of you guys on. I hope you come back. It was really cool. Thank you. It was fun. And uh, remember, Carol's book is called The Purpose of Your Life Experiential Guide. Thanks, everybody. And for, I forgot this lady was on the phone because she was going to yell at me, and she got tired of waiting. She hung up. So please call us back, Sherry, Angel, and you can gripe at me live on the air. Good night. Goodbye. Good morning. Whatever.